The United States has announced 700 million US dollars worth of new military aid for Ukraine, including advanced weapon systems. A day after saying the US would not provide Kyiv with any rockets that could be used to strike Russian territory, President Biden said he agreed to send medium-range rockets after receiving assurances from Ukraine. Writing in the New York Times, President Biden said, if Russia does not pay a heavy price for its actions, it will send a message to other would-be aggressors that they too can seize territory and subjugate other countries. The sound of artillery echoes across the Donbass. Russian forces in sunny fields, shelling already shattered towns and cities before moving troops in for combat. Meeting with Slovakia's president, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said getting artillery from allies would make a crucial difference. Out front tonight, several major developments in the investigation into the elementary school massacre that left 19 children and two teachers dead. Texas officials tonight revealing the incident commander during that shooting, Uvalde School District Police Chief Pete Arredondo, is now not responding to investigators' requests for a follow-up interview. This also comes as the Texas Department of Public Safety tonight confirms the elementary school teacher who propped open that door right before the attack did in fact close it before the gunman entered. The teacher initially propped open the door with a rock, then ran back inside to get her phone when the gunman crashed his truck. And according to the official, she then removed the rock, closed the door. It just didn't lock. And now investigators are looking into why. This information is not what police originally said during their press conference on Friday. To Israeli police, it's almost as bad as a weapon. Wherever they see it, whether at a protest or a funeral ceremony, they take it away. Even the funeral of Shirin Abu Akleh, attended by thousands, wasn't an exception. But Israeli universities have enjoyed relative freedom until now. Recently, Eli Cohen from the leading opposition party Likud sponsored a bill banning so-called enemy flags, including that of Palestine. And it's now before the Knesset for a preliminary hearing on Wednesday. Palestinian students in Australian universities say that it's an attack on their identity. Students at the University of Johannesburg in Soweto demonstrate following weeks of intermittent power cuts which have hampered their studies. The university's management blamed thieves stealing electricity cables for the blackouts. In Foslerus, east of Johannesburg, more power cuts because of crime. Thieves have been videoed digging up cables, sometimes in broad daylight. But much of the theft takes place at night during the electricity blackouts. While South Africa is battling to keep its lights on because of issues like aging facilities, the problem's being worsened by rampant crime. Electricity cables are being stolen at an alarming rate, and officials are trying to stop as much of it as possible.